second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. So if you want to know whether you're a Christian, look at this. This is what the Bible says. To be a Christian, you have to be like this. Otherwise, you are wasting your time or deceiving yourself. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Second Corinthians 5, 17. If you are there, I read. Second Corinthians 5, 17. He says, he says, Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Let me read from the King James here, this time around. King James. He said, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. This is the this this scripture is something that a lot of people they read, but they don't understand it. I, I have a teaching on the new life in Christ, which I'm going to emphasize each of those words there. So to be born again means to be a Christian means you are a new person. The nature of sin that you have, the nature that you have from your family. The nature that you have from that you have before, the nature of Adam that you have, has been supplanted, and a new nature of God has come. And as long as you don't agree with what the scriptures say here, you are wasting your time. You are in religion. That is why sickness will deal with you. Demon will deal with you. Because the only way for the demons to respect you, the only way for sickness to respect you, the only way for curses to respect you is when you answer the name that God calls you, not the name that some of the pastors are telling you. This is the meaning. Again, let me read the second chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. He is not going to be a new creature. Where it's not that when you pray so well and you become a new creature. He is present continuous tense. So faith in God means when God says something is, you agree, it is. When God says something was, it is worse. When God says something will be, it is will be. So when, you, when God says something is and you say it will be, you are, you, are, you are not in faith. You are on your own. When God says something is and you say was, you are on your own. The devil always wants to know precise whether you know what the Bible says. Or else, you are in trouble. It's a new creation. Say all things are passed away. It's not, it doesn't say all things will pass away gradually. That's not what he says. It doesn't say, oh, do we pass away after you fast, you fast, 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 all your days drive fasting and prayer. It doesn't say, oh, do we pass away when you so sick. All things are pass away. A brand new person has just come in. And he said, behold, behold, dear me, see like a prophet. Don't see your situation. See what the Bible says. The Bible says, why will you look not at the things that are seen? In order for you to enjoy the new life in Christ, you need to see from God's angle, according to his word, according to his knowledge. If you, if you are realistic, you are in trouble. The only realistic that you need to have is the word of God, because that's the reality. I have a message on that topic also that I'm going to share very soon. All things are passed away, and behold, all things are new. Let's continue. Then, and all things are God. You now that you are born again now, you now belong to God. God has collected you from the devil. You are now child of God. That is the meaning. All things are of God. Your eyes is of God now. Your tongue is of God now. Your spirit, your soul, and your body, they belong to God. You cease it to be your own. You don't become the property. You see, you have been bought with the price. That is the meaning of what is in there. All things are of God. Who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Now, before I read the next verse, it say, Christianity means eh, reconciling people to God, not to the pastor, not to our, our idea, not to what we think. Reconciling people back to God because God made them, God created them before the devil took over from Adam. So God sent Jesus Christ to go. Now, let me tell you something about the Christianity. That, uh, let's read verse uh, 19. He said to read that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing the trespasses unto them, and has committed unto us the word of reconciliation. The word the Bible says, God is not counting their sin unto them. It's because Christ has paid every price. So nobody is going to hell because of what he did. They go to hell because they refuse to accept 
the, the, the suffering of Christ. That's why they go to sorrow. So Christianity means, as a pastor, as I'm talking to you now, as you are seeing now, you see, it's like what you are seeing is that God in Shino, God in Pastor Shino, reconciling people to himself. That's the meaning of Christianity. See, it's assignment. It was God that was in Christ. You see, Christ was just the clothes, the suit that God was using that time. Bringing people back to himself, not to the pastor, not to our idea. So, when you say you are Christian, our target is to reconcile people to God, and you need to know what God said before you can reconcile God to the people. To reconcile two people, you have to ask, what do you want, and what do you want? And the two of them, they come to an agreement, okay, let us agree on this point. That is when reconciliation can be possible. It takes two people to reconcile. So, how are you going to reconcile people to God when you don't know what God wants? That's it. That's the meaning of a Christian. Not what we think, not our idea. And I want you to know that point. Let me read that piece again. Second Corinthians 5, verse 19. He said, To which that God was in Christ, alive, active. That is the meaning of Christianity. God alive, divinity alive in a humanity. Because without the God inside of you, you cannot ask, do God's work. That's the meaning of what the Bible says in the Secrets of the First Verse. That it is not by power, it's not by mind, but by my spirit, say the Lord. You can the assignment of God that you are doing, preaching to people is not something that anybody can do, any pastor can do on your own and win people to Christ without the Holy Spirit. You cannot work for God without the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is the, the Christian is a Holy Spirit, God, Christ in you, working, saying, telling people back to God. And you have to tell people what God wants before you can say you are a Christian. It means, let God walk through me. That is the of Christianity. To reach people, I'm not the one doing the work, but God speaking through me. Why? I say that because uh, you see, God is a spirit. The devil is a spirit. Now, when the devil wants to talk to Adam, if Adam uh, if was hearing any first of him, she will not even listen. So the devil has to look for serpent to come and use serpent to reconcile him to himself, and he succeeded. Why was this successful? Because the devil was uh, the, because Eve does not know what God said. When Adam was passing information to him, maybe, maybe to her, maybe he did not pass the correct information. That is why, as a Christian, as you are listening to me now, you need to know what the Bible says on each point. What the Bible says about faith, what the Bible says about born again, what the Bible says about our, our, our health, what the Bible says about finances, how does the Bible say we should relate to be? If you don't know it, you come you commit error. The devil always come and attack people that don't know the scripture. The reason why Jesus Christ was able to defeat the devil all through is that he is giving him correct scripture. Quote it correctly. Because the devil knows all the scripture too. So, just like the devil enter into serpent and come and use the serpent to reconcile Eve to himself, God, now in Christ now, reconcile the world. Through us, if you read Second Second uh, Five as uh, uh, twenty, he says, "So then, we are ambas ambassador for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be you reconciled to God, not to me, not to the pastor. Our assignment is not to the, to let people reconcile to us, to reconcile them to God. So I'm just like a friend that God is using to minister to people." Verse 21, for he has made him to be seen for us. Who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Now, this is why God made us his righteousness. That without that righteousness, you can't lead anybody to God. Never. That's the power that Adam lost. God now gave us the power. Because without that power, it's just like the king. When the king wants to send somebody to the town, they give them their staff. Whenever the person put the staff of the king down, the king is talking. Maybe the president also. As a minister, and minister go to a place. That's the president today. So that's the meaning of an ambassador. We have the power of God, the nature of God, to go and represent Him. Because without their power, 
you cannot preach because the kingdom of darkness, as I'm preaching, some of them will listen to the message that we need to. You see now? So without that power, without understanding the correct scripture, and you want to work for God, you will just be a Sarah. You will just be you will waste your life. So that is one thing I want us to know about Christianity. Now, the next question I want to ask us is that uh, if it is God that sent me now, we have seen that uh, Christianity means uh, God in me, God working through me to talk to people. So if it is true that God is the one working to me, the Bible says God is holy. Have it? God is righteous. Now it means if it is God that is talking to me, to, uh, through me, it means all you will be hearing from me is the word of God only. How do you know that this is someone that God sent? How do you know someone that's a Christian? A Christian is the Spirit of God entering you when you give your life to Christ. Then now this living to you. That's the fruit of the Spirit. So one of the way to know whether God sent somebody is that uh, the person must be speaking the word of their God. See. So because when Jesus was uh, uh, on school sonnet, eh, the Bible says God was in Christ. Eh, Reconciling people to himself. Now let us see whether it is true that Jesus Christ was sent by God. Let's see. John chapter 3, verses 31. John chapter 3, verse 31. It shows whether John chapter 3, verse 31. I'm reading this one from the Amplified Classic Translation. John chapter 3, from verse 31 to 34. If you are doing it says, it says, he who come from above, heaven, is far above all. He was talking about Jesus Christ there. He who comes from the earth, belong to the earth. And they talk the language of earth. That is it. So anybody that say I'm a pastor, I'm representing God, and I'm preaching to people to get them saved, and they are saying something that doesn't agree with what the Bible says, that doesn't come from above, the Christ is not from God, he's from himself. He's starting a business is opening a business adventure. The first thing he says that uh, let me read again. John chapter 3, verse 31, Amplified Classic. He says, He who come from above, heaven, is far above all others. He who come from the earth, belong to the earth, and talk the language of earth. His words are from earthly standpoint. He who come from heaven, is far above all others, far and superior to others, in prominence and in excellence. So people, they want us to be realistic, they want to be reasonable. And what does this mean? Me? Let us be realistic, let us look at the fact of the ground. But as a minister, when he on it, he doesn't look at the fact of the ground. He come and say, what God say? Exactly. That is what, that is what he's saying to people. Anybody that says something from God, he fight them instantly. One time, Peter was telling him that, say, sir, don't say that you are going to die. He said, get behind me, Satan, because what the Peter was saying was not from, the, from God. And when Peter said the word of God, he said, it's a flesh and blood, he's not showing this truth to you. He said, it's from my father, from heaven. Anything, anytime you are sitting with Jesus Christ, all you want to hear from you, he doesn't want to hear whether you are a pastor, whether you are a bishop, whether you are a general overseer, what you want to hear from you, are you speaking the word of God? When you don't see the word of God, say, out of my sight. That's the meaning of a, a, a Christian and someone that God sent. First of the two, whosoever received his testimony has set as I set a seal of approval to this God is true, that man has definitely satisfied, acknowledged, declared once and for all, and is himself assured that it is divine, true that God cannot lie. For since, look at verse 34, that's the point of the verse. He said, For since in God's ascent, speak the word of God, proclaims God's own message, God does not give him his spirit sparingly or by measure. But boundless is the gift God make of you. So, if you want the power of God to flow through you, then speak God's word. How do you expect God's power to be demonstrated in your life when you are speaking proverb? You are telling people uh, proverb, and we are saying, let us be realistic. Be realistic is that uh, God, what God says, is not what I'm saying. 